typhoon uh, is being blamed in the Philippines. It was an F4 tornado, 100 miles wide. And then uh, it was still a tornado for 200 miles on either side of it. But anyway, they're at the climate meeting, and of course, you know, people that are traumatized from the Philippines. Uh, science tells us simply that climate change will mean more intense tropical storms as the earth warms up. That would include the oceans. The energy that is stored, the energy that is stored in the waters off the Philippines will increase the intensity of the typhoons. Okay, that's the global warming. Then we got the Telegraph where he wrote another article. And they don't mention about uh, the 300 tons a day coming out of Fukushima, radioactive water. But it bears As highly me. radioactive water from Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant is pouring out at a rate of 300 tons a day. In another one of the telegram, they actually do mention it, but at the bottom of the article, in July, the company confirmed that as much as 300 tons of water escaped into the Pacific every day since the disaster struck 29 months ago, see? But come up and look, you got to go a long way up, and they mentioned 300 a number of times, but it's not a day. you got to go all the way to the bottom of the article to read that part, see? And this was in August. Japan raises severity ratings for Fukushima leaks. And it's only when you get at the bottom of it. But Julian uh, Royal from Tokyo, that's the game he played. I just want to show you very quick here. How he'll mention 300 tons. Right, so people glance over things all the time. So they, at this stage, they might read everything, see? But the NRA raised the warning levels after 300 tons of contaminated coolant seeped from storage tanks and left pools of radioactive water. See that 300 tons? And then the 100 millisievers, and then 350,000 tons stored there. And as you come down, you find out it's 300 tons of water escaping to the Pacific every day for 20, 29 months, okay? 300 tons a day. Now, why is that important? Well, here's the academic journal based upon just two weeks' release over a six-year period, right? And you can see the entire Pacific Ocean is going to end up contaminated. So that's radiated water. The gamma, beta isotopes are all producing uh, energy. The lands that were grossly contaminated by the destruction of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant are classified by the number of curies of radiation per square kilometer. We're 3,840 square miles of land contaminated with 15 to 40 curies of radiation per square kilometer. These lands are considered strict radiation dose control zones. The 1,100 square mile uninhabitable exclusion zone that surrounds a destroyed Chernobyl reactor has greater than 40 curies of radioactivity per square kilometer. For those more familiar with square miles, that would be 104 curies per square mile. One curie is defined as that amount of any radioactive material that will decay at a rate of 37 billion disintegrations per second. They get sucked up here, right? And what do you end up with? You end up with a catastrophic typhoons and then blame it on climate change. 300 tons a day of isotopes and gamma and beta and 1,300 weaponized isotopes. I want you to remember that there's a million gallons running over each core, those three melted cores a minute. That's 1,440 minutes in a day and that's uh, 977 days now. And that ocean is off by about 100,000 of how radiated it should be. And so these typhoons are going to get three, four, and 500 miles an hour. And the Guardian is not going to tell you they're going to blame it on global warming, just like they just done at the Telegraph and the Guardians. They do this all the time. And at this stage of the game, where billions of people will get cancers because of their lies and will never have a chance because of their lies, we have to call them out. This is... Uh in any other aspect, this would be a F4 hurricane, a tornado, I'm sorry, except an F4 would be maybe a quarter mile, excuse me, half mile wide. This creature, those top speeds, it hit land at 195, gusting to 235, excuse me, miles per hour, but sustained at 195. It was like the big bad wolf coming on. Here goes 100 square miles for 1,000 miles. Get out of the way. This is something you would see on, you would expect to see on Mars, you know, not on Earth, okay? And what's going on is all that radiation, that hemorrhaging, you know, just 3 million gallons a minute going over the cores, there's 300 tons a day that they're reporting on. But that 3 million gallons, all that radio and all that uh, 
and all the stuff that's coming out of those cores every time those rods go down and that, that gets atomized and gets up there and rains back down into the ocean and gets picked up in all these clouds and it's just the witch's brew well each one of these gamma and beta particles are energy that's energy it's energy right it's just beaten energy and so when the cyclones are picking this up well the cyclones are going to get more energy period it's just it's just physics i would imagine is the better way to explain it out is that when you got this volume of water and, and and you give it a boost it's mad it's totally insane what we're looking at in the future and this thing is going to hemorrhage out for another 40 or 50 years and so what are we going to get a thousand mile typhoons um, and it's just something that i postulated just a while back four or five videos back i know i was um i was talking about global warming i uh, used it in that perspective and it, like I was watching it today and I was like, oh my goodness, that thing is a hundred, that thing is hitting land at 195. So I went and looked up tornadoes and, and it was a number four. Uh, can you imagine number four coming through your neighborhood? I mean, usually they're, like you say, quarter mile at best, maybe a, a rare one, say 3% or something like that would be a half a mile or something. And here we are, we're looking at something that's even more ferocious. It's bringing with it up to a 50 foot storm surge in some areas up to 50 foot and so people got to worry about getting electrocuted let alone everything else everywhere they're going usually you get on your roof you get on your roof now you're able to pitch a quarter mile away if you're lucky whatever's left of you uh, it's this is carnage we're talking about now that's carnage okay that's not going to go away it's only going to get bigger and more scarier uh, and a lot faster than anybody's willing to admit you know, like all the big players get up on the media, they can't come out and postulate the real numbers, terrorize the entire planet at the one time. And so you buy right to see, and we, those 1,300 guard counters, need, we need that for every community. And they say you need all those technicians for each community, and you need three shifts a day for each community. So if you got a community with 1,000 people, you need to bring in 3,800 more people with guard counters, and they got to catch that stuff as it's coming in, so you need 24-hour shifts. And if you can't do that, then um, you have to assume the worst. And that if you live under the jet stream that comes over, well, that's not a very good spot. It's not a spot you can stay. And you got to think about how the oceans work. And so you got to get away from the Pacific, because as these storms get bigger, they're going to rake this planet. It's going to be worse than Mars. You see Mars. These, these, like you're going to see five, six, seven hundred mile an hour, three, four hundred mile storms, or F10 tornadoes. When it's, like I say, a tornado is usually only going to last for a few miles, maybe a quarter mile wide. That one in the Philippines, that was worse than any tornado. 235 mile an hour steady gust on top of the steady winds, 195 miles an hour. That was hell on earth. The, the, the air, the air was, was a projectile. The air was like a blender, because it had all that shrapnel from all the buildings, and it was whisking them along at 195 miles an hour. Think about a truck coming down the road with a big stick hanging off it, and it's going at 195 miles an hour, and you're riding on your bicycle, and it hits you. What do you think is going to happen? Telephone pole hanging off that truck. Well, 195 miles an hour will launch everything. It'll launch bricks for tens of miles at a time inconceivable like a brick at that speed would wreck a car so imagine what a tree will do and once these gets higher it'll pick up boulders and, and so your ear becomes like the ear becomes a mashing machine that's what happened in the philippines see and so we got to get to work on dealing with this and now we got 195 mile an hour winds imagine if they're using harp to give that a couple of little taps to get it going a little bit faster don't think they can't do that stuff okay not even for a second you don't know what they're up to. I, I don't know what they're up to either, but I got a pretty good idea because I'm paying attention for many years. And uh, I just deal with the real stuff and they play around with just the most kooky stuff you can imagine because they understand these physics. They're supposed to lock radiation up for a million years in a sarcophagus and then figure out a way to deal with it. The future generation in a million years is supposed to work out how to deal with it, see? That's their plan. There is no plan. Well, the plan was to build it where it was, have that happen to it at some point, 
maybe even help it, and um, exterminate most of the planet. That's literally their plan. They don't care if it takes all the life with it, all the other life. They've already got all the seeds. They already got their arcs, so to speak. Like at this stage, if someone was to tell me, oh, they got bases up on the moon, that's what. That's why no one ever goes there because they're they don't want us to know that what they're up to, that they're going to kill off this planet, if it backfires and need to bail. That's why they're building all these ships to go up to uh, space all the time. Now all these private entrepreneurs, it's like mad. And that's why Google is looking for life extension technologies. I mean, yeah, you could definitely go down that road because all of that is actually there. And who knows? Uh, they can't put it past them at this stage because they, they know this is going on. They know that if we came together, we could solve it, and they, they were not going to do that. And they know it's going to kill off just incredible amounts of people over the next four or five or six years, not to mention the next 10, 15, or 20, not to mention the GMO, not to mention the 65,000 unregulated chemicals that are not uh, no environmental human impact studies done on them, and not to mention how they're drugging the population against their will through the water and through the foods, uh, which is different than the GMO, because you're allowed to lose 2,200 of these chemicals, these carcinogens, and you can just make food out of that. It's not actually food, but it looks like food, see? But it's, it's legally food according to idiots and dummies and murderers. Certainly not me or you, right? The cowards, the lobbyists that got these laws passed. Nuclear power is finished anyway now, once this goes out uh, next year or so that uh, what, what this is going to do to the ocean, create these super typhoons, these massive the tornadoes. That's a tornado. That's a 100-mile tornado. Can you imagine if the media come out and said, 100-mile tornado goes down and, uh, and uh, I don't know, what, what's a good word for what, what happened to the Philippines today? Uh, bludgeoned? Is that a strong enough word? I, like, it must be hell on earth. Can you imagine 195 miles an hour? Can you imagine that? Imagine some woman getting her hair done and spend $500 to get her hair all done and walk out into that thing. <laughs> Take the hair right off your head. Corporations have human rights instead of charters, illegally unconstitutional human rights. And that's why none of them ever goes to jail and that's why they only get a fine, right? It's because corporations got human rights. Solve that and you'll solve every other problem besides Fukushima and 195 mile an hour winds. That uh, brings a whole kind of new meaning to the words all huff and puff and blow your house down. It's like it doesn't even huff, it doesn't puff. It just, where was my house again? It's, where was my neighbor's house again? Because when that comes through, and it did, and it's still moving, <laughs> it's a 100 mile wide F4 tornado. A typical tornado is like a half mile at best. Access on usually, usually a quarter mile, maybe. And that's a big, you know, that's, wow, 195 miles per hour. And the scary part is it touched shore and it came with it 20 to a 50 foot storm surge. That's tsunami stuff, okay? That's electrocution uh, time now. And you can imagine what the Philippines, I'm not laughing, it's just Gallo's laugh again, is the Philippines. Yeah, low-lying houses and the telephone poles, people are tapping into it themselves all the time and everybody, you're getting soaking wet because it's a typhoon, so it's lugging all this radioactive water into the Pacific and those uh, gamma and beta particles are heating up the typhoon. It's like, what? The? It's like, I don't even want to think about it. All I know is, you know, like living alongside the Pacific, one of the issues I have with it now, of course, uh, would be not only the radiation and the radiated thunderstorms and the typhoons and blah, blah, blah. They're not really typhoons. They're actually F4 tornadoes that are 100 miles wide at their most powerful. But that doesn't mean they're... Like, this thing is... This is huge. This is New York all the way down to Toronto. This is, like, unbelievable, massive. This is... <laughs> this is unbelievable. Man-made phenomenon that's only going to get worse, only going to get faster, only going to get meaner, only going to get bigger. Because all that water, all these particles, all that energy, that's there's more going into the ocean every day, and it accumulates, and then these storms are sucking it up, and just it it aggravates them. That's exactly what's going on. Everybody in the real world um, can understand something like that. You want to think about your future and where you're going to live. <laughs>